we're getting really, really cheap goods, someone's making them really, really cheaply. <laughs> Hi, welcome along to today's vlog. I'm pretty sure that's the first time I've played uh, the Sios on the Yanagasawa W010 tenor. Sounds absolutely fantastic. Really, really pleased with it. Really, as usual, as with this style, so free blowing. I've got this out today because I wanted to answer a question that David Arato posted on my uh, Mark VI video, which is why are Selma saxophones so expensive? Well, I'm not going to say about Selma because that's uh, Selma's question to answer. But saxophones, why are saxophones, particularly from the top three brands, that's Selma, Yanagasawa, like this one, and Yamaha, why are they so expensive compared to, say, something you can buy on Amazon, something you can buy off eBay? And there are a number of reasons for that, most of which I'm sure you're aware. As a teacher, I only really recommend Selma, Yamaha and Yanagasawa. Why is that? Well, first of all, they've got decades, and in Selma's case, nearly a century worth of experience of making saxophones. They make good instruments. They are good quality instruments that hold their value and that will enable the student to be able to play in tune. But also as a teacher, I'm also wary that the price point of all three of those brands can put a lot of people off. And I always go back to remembering my saxophone, my first saxophone, which was an Amati saxophone made in Czechoslovakia. I bought it in January 1991. The country failed to exist about six months later. It split up into Czech Republic and Slovak Slovakia. But there was definitely, um, it wasn't the best made horn in the world, but it was a great place to start. And I, it was £495 in 1991. Now, a quick inflation adjuster, not totally accurate, but certainly uh, messing around a little bit, asking a couple of friends who were quite good at maths. That roughly comes out in today's money about 1100 to 1200 pounds. And there are some good saxophones around that mark. And certainly some of my students who've been with me for a while um, still have Max Sax saxophones, which I was working with 10 years ago. Um, and they're great, they're playing, they're still going fine. One of my students actually just needs to get one booked in for a service. It's gone 10 years of playing, having a lesson every week on it, and it's still playing okay. You know, it needs, it needs a service. It desperately needs a, probably an overhaul, to be fair. Um, but it's done okay. So around that £1,100 mark, there is still some decent stuff. And I would say that that Max Sax saxophone was better than the Amati I pay, uh, bought in the early 90s. And certainly competition has driven those down. But when I toured the Selma factory and I looked at kind of the skill level involved of the employees, the number of employees, of course, being in Europe, being in Paris, it has to abide by all those uh, staffing. And obviously with any business, anyone will tell you who runs a business, their biggest overhead is staffing costs. So all those employees have got holiday pay, they've got sick pay, they've got obviously the uh, females have got maternity pay, uh, the blokes have got paternity pay, all those kind of things, all those benefits and stuff that have to come with working within the EU. Let's not get into a whole Brexit argument right now, but within any Western economy, you know, there are rights for workers that are not there in the, particularly in China. Um, and it got me thinking ethically about it. And I got to thinking, well, is it right to buy saxophones that are so cheap from China? I mean, you, you, it's the age old fair trade kind of argument. You know, if we're getting really, really cheap goods, someone's making them really, really cheaply. And, you know, when it was the whole thing with the trainers the argument, the sneakers in the States, you know, in the, in the 90s with Nike and those kind of things, you know, there's some kid in a sweatshop in Bangladesh sewing them for $2 a day or less. Um, is it right that we're exploiting them by buying that? Is it right that we're exploiting people by buying their saxophones? I'm not going to answer that question because as somebody pointed out to me, the computer that I am going to edit this video on, 
the iPhone that I use every single day are all made in China and particularly iPhones the whole Foxconn thing are they really ethically made it's an interesting thing I mean let me know in the comments below I mean do you I mean there are people who are going to do it there are people who are you know going to who are price sensitive and I as a teacher I'm torn because I want everyone to have access to music. I want every kid to have the opportunity to learn the saxophone if they want to. And as a parent with two children who are, I hope one, well, Charlie is learning an instrument, I know how expensive instruments can be. They can be really, really expensive. Uh, if you've got two or three children and you want to encourage them, and when schools are just having their arts budgets absolutely massacred within the state sector anyway, it's very, very difficult to afford instruments. I mean, when I was at... Um, sixth form we had a very successful big band that played and one of the things that the teacher had done to his eternal credit was that he had gone out over the years from from you know raising money from concerts that the band had done all the money that they'd raised had gone into purchasing instruments and they had a good set of yamaha student saxophones some yamaha trumpets so his option was if someone had been couldn't afford uh, to have an instrument or have been learning an instrument through a school instrument and then got to sixth form didn't have their own instrument there was an instrument there ready for them to play uh, we had a baritone you know baritones have always been expensive um, so it isn't cheap to make a musical instrument certainly if it's been made on the cheap it's often quite cheap it's not very very good there are you know and some of my colleagues on youtube have gone out there are a couple of videos knocking about where people have bought the cheapest possible saxophone off amazon and compared it to a pro model but i would argue what is a pro model but definitely i would say there's an argument to be had on this. I'd also say that not all markets are as price sensitive as we are here in Western Europe and the US. Uh, you know, in the, that kind of westernized culture, we are quite price, price sensitive when it comes to goods. We've become accustomed to jumping on the internet and price comparison sites, trying to find the best deal for us. And I was reading something else this morning in a, in a book and it's kind of said, you know, what goes around comes around. Uh, you know, I'm not necessarily into this whole karma thing, but there is certainly an element that, you know, there's, you reap what you sow. Um, you're out there supporting manufacturers that treat their employees well, that, that, you know, go to great lengths to make sure they're making you a brilliant instrument and you will nine times out of 10 get a very, very good saxophone. You'll have to pay for it, but you know, you have to pay for the good things in life. As I've said in other videos, there's a reason why BMW, Mercedes, maybe not talk about BMWs given what happened with me and my BMW, but there is a reason why Mercedes cars cost, but he BMW these Teslas even cost so much money. They cost a lot of money to make good things. Good things cost money. <laughs> Alright. 
Look who's there. Who's in that poster? <laughs> what were you just asking me? Um, what? So Amy was asking, what top five historical places would I like to visit? So there's a chance for another vlog. Thank you very much for watching today's vlog. I hope it wasn't too controversial. Like I said, you know, who, that kind of a whole question about saxophones, who knows? Uh, make sure you check out my last vlog here. This is what I was up to this time last year. I will see you really soon. See you later.